Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good. I'm Matt. So, how late are you guys going to be out here? Oh, we're leaving right now. You're leaving right now, and then kids are, are in the back school all week. All week. All week. So, mm -hmm. what are you guys doing as far as kids coming up and talking to you about stuff? Uh, well, the kids were coming up and talking to us until the school stopped them. Okay. Okay. Would you like to see what we're giving them? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. And then what do you do if like a girl comes up to you and tells you she's pregnant and needs help or anything like that? We'll get her the help. Where? Wherever we can. But where, I mean, where And if we, we have to do it ourselves, we'll do it ourselves. But as far as local resources around here, what do we have? Right here? We're not from this area. So what, as far as crisis pregnancy centers, uh, we don't know which ones you have right in this area, but we could find out very easily. Don't but like you think I said, it's if, important though when you guys are out here to actually know where the resources are in the area? No. We're not here to point people to crisis pregnancy centers because the truth of the matter is, crisis pregnancy centers are really not the answer. To some girls, I mean, I faced a crisis pregnancy at 16. He actually goes to the school now, so resources were the answer to me. Helping well, actually, if the church was being the church, you wouldn't even need those resources because the church would be providing for you. And that's where we are, we're the church. That's why I said, if worse comes to worse, we would take care of it ourselves. Okay. Okay, we believe that the church should be taking care of this. We shouldn't be subcontracting our work out to somebody else to do it for us. That's just passing the buck. We're Christians, and we believe as the church, we should be taking care well, of this. But I would say most of the local pregnancy centers around here are church-run. I mean, they're church-led resources. So it would just kind of make sense for you guys if you're going to come out here into a community to actually, like, be familiar with the resources. Mm -hmm. Because especially post-abortion care, when you've got women out here who are going to be seeing these images that are rather graphic, and it might, you know, I get your whole point is to trigger them to repent and everything else. Well, like... We're not trying to trigger anybody to anything. Well, you need... If you open these wounds, you need to also be providing resources. And Would that's what the church is supposed to do. Like I said, we, we don't believe in crisis pregnancy centers. That's why to us, they're so not really... where are really, you guys from? If you're we not live... We're the Abolition Society of Little Elm. Little Elm. Okay, so... Up by Denton. That's the church. That's the resources. So a woman who has an issue here, you're wanting to take her all the way out to Little Elm? No, we have people that are abolitionists here in Richardson. They're just not out with us today. But as a church, we should not be subcontracting our work out. I mean, Jesus said that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. We're not to pay somebody to else to love feet. them. Like the church is all of the people here who are helping as well. I'm just saying, right. I think it's it's somewhat irresponsible to come into a community and do a display as, um, I mean, it's going to, it's an emotive display. It's going mm -hmm. to get a reaction and then to not know where the resources are to actually send people to help in the area. Like I said, we are the resources, ma'am. But you're not. You're in Little Elm. <laughs> no. If we had to come from Little Elm to be a resource, we'd be a resource. Okay? That's not the issue. The issue is, is that Christians like to take the things that they don't really feel comfortable doing and pay somebody else to do it. And that is not what Jesus said. But I, I don't think, what, I think you're misrepresenting these, because again, these are these are church funded pregnancy centers that are in the area. I'm just saying, know where these, these we know churches church are funded. and these resources are and these things are to actually help women. Because I do think that you have girls here who are post-abortive who are seeing this and then they're getting sent into class with a whole lot of feelings and emotions and probably want to talk to somebody and I'm sorry, but talking well, to like that's not, that's older the school. dudes is not what's going to draw them out. They need actual help. <laughs> well, for, like I said, uh, we don't believe in crisis pregnancy centers because most of the people who go to crisis pregnancy centers aren't really the ones you'll see at the abortion clinics. Right. Okay. They're people who need resources. Right. And second off, we know they're all church funded. Okay. We stand out in front of the churches that fund them. Okay. Because like I said, when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, you should love your neighbor as yourself. God's word says that we are supposed to defend those being led to death, to be a voice for the voices. We're not supposed to pay that so guy because... you guys are supposed to do that? That's what I'm saying. No, I think these Christians the are supposed thing. to... You said right, you're a Christian? I, I am a Christian. So and then I'm, you should be doing it. Right, and I am. Yep, see? I'm, I'm so there you go. I'm very active in the pro-life community. So see, well, we're not pro-life. Right, we're abolitionists. I, I know you hate the pro-life community. I get that. I just... I don't know. I, I want everyone to be as effective as they can at ending abortion. And so for me, it's very difficult to understand how two 
older dude standing out here yelling at a bunch of high school girls through a megaphone is going to draw anybody closer to I don't to have a megaphone. Or becoming anti-abortion. Sorry, you sounded like you had a megaphone when I pulled That's up. That's just my voice. Mm -hmm. and, and second of all, we don't hate the pro-life movement. We're just pointing out to the pro-life movement. What's Hill's hashtag? Down with the pro-life movement or something, right? What's that? Isn't, do you have a hashtag that's no, like... Put an end. In the pro-life movement. P-A-E-T-T. -T. Yeah, we don't want to regulate when, where, and how... And that's what the pro-life movement's done. We don't want to do that. We want to make it illegal. The pro-life right. movement, all it does... There's rapes illegal, here. murders illegal. They still happen all the time. Murder's so not legal. I, they're illegal. They right. still happen all the right. time. So I'm saying right. what we need to be doing is being very effective at ending. Do you abortion. know? Do you know that abortion right. is already effective? I, and I'm not saying the pro-life movement's necessarily been all that effective either. I have a, I have a huge problem with people screaming at individuals as a way of being effective. I think we have to change the culture, and it, do you it know, doesn't happen through this. Do you know that in Texas right now, abortion is illegal? Okay. It is only the pro-life laws that have been passed that said, well, if you have this, then you can do that. Oh, and if you have, it's illegal in Texas. The laws are already in the books. We're just trying to get people to go back to the law. Because the laws that the pro-life movement have passed have said, uh, murder, you know, it's illegal to murder your kid unless you do it before 20 weeks. Unless you do it when, after you've seen an ultrasound. Unless you do it after you go I guess to counsel. That's where we differ because to me, the, the legal part of it, even if it is illegal tomorrow, people are still going to be having them. We have enough doctors that are sympathetic. We have enough people who refuse to even listen to a pro life message because we're the equivalent of PETA because we stand out here doing crazy stuff and no one will end up listening to our message and understanding the humanity of the unborn. When you show them a gory image like that and they're trying to say this is a blob of tissue, it looks legitimately like a blob of tissue. If you don't understand the That humanity, looks like a blob of it tissue? It to people who refuse to see the humanity of the unborn. That That's looks like a baby to me. Understanding. And, and, and I think you have a whole lot of people who refuse to even listen to our message because of this tactic right here. So, I don't know. I was curious. I wanted to hear if you actually knew of resources to help women or what you do when they actually come up. But we we are the like, resources. I mean, I mean, if they want to... What's that? If they just obey and are obedient to Christ, that's a heck of a resource, right? Like, the power is in the blood. So what we do is we try to teach them to repent of their sin, be obedient to Christ, do what he says, and, that, and God will help them. God literally will help them. And if not, people like me will adopt their kids. All right? So well, we'll, or like we'll, we'll support people. We'll help people. That's what we're... Yeah. The church... That's what we're trying to say. That you're not supposed to pay somebody else to do those things for you. But the Nobody's life, paying pregnancy centers to do those things. You actually, like the churches a are. director. Yeah. You have one director. It's mostly volunteer-led. It's mostly yeah. people from the churches. So I get that y'all's theology is... Well, and we higher do, up and so you don't want do other hate church the people pro -life movement, to but it's a biblical hate it's called enmity when god talks about how he hates all right it's at enmity with so we are enmity with the pro-life movement because they just pass iniquitous decrees bad laws that say when where and how you can murder babies they don't they could if you could pass one bill to say the heartbeat bill if you could pass that you could pass a bill to say make it illegal in fact it's already illegal in texas our so governor in one day close down every abortion clinic, get rid of every Plan B pill in, in uh, Walmart and CVS. He could do it, but nobody asked him to do it. Well, but again, I think that that's so far-fetched. Not, not that that... Why is that far-fetched? Not the law part. The fact that that would suddenly make abortion stop, that wouldn't well, end no. abortion. <laughs> right? Murder is illegal, here. people murder. We have Rape is illegal. That right. induce labor all yeah. the time because right. women don't want to have pregnancy like you right. have enough doctors who are, who but are doing it but if we get rid of most most like why is rape illegal because it's wrong and wicked and opposes the law of god right because men say that should not happen and if it does happen you will you will go to jail we need to do that same thing for babies like why don't babies get that right like if you murder a baby you're preaching to the choir dude like no, bodily I'm not. autonomy I'm, I'm preaching I to promise. a pro-lifer who supports the pro-life movement, who keeps abortion. I don't know that I support the pro-life movement. I'm doing everything I can to change the culture is what I'm saying. The laws to me are irrelevant. And if we make abortion illegal, then you're right. You have a bunch of pro-lifers who are then going to be like, okay, our work here's done. And they're going to, you know, go on to the next issue they care about. I don't think the issues are the laws. I think it's a culture that does not see the humanity of the unborn. And I think the best, most effective way to do that we all know is not humans. by We all, we all know they're humans. We all know they're humans. Everybody, even the abortion doctors, everybody knows they're humans. That's not in question. What's in question is, are we going to give them the same rights under the law as we have? 
And the answer is no, we don't care. And you know who doesn't care? The 30,000 uh, churches in Texas. They don't. Or, or they would actually do something. Having a moral opinion is wicked and evil if it doesn't produce moral action. So we have over 70,000 pastors. We have 13,000 kids right now in foster care waiting right. to be adopted. 13,000? We have over 30,000. No, in there's 30,000 in foster care, but 13,000 are waiting to be adopted right now. But nobody wants them because they're not babies. Mm -hmm. There's a huge waiting line for babies, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just proof that our culture, our, and I'm, when I'm talking about our culture, I'm not talking about, you know, the guys that go to strip clubs every night. I'm not talking about Satanists. I'm talking about Christendom. Our Christendom in Texas is wicked and evil because they do not care about James 127, taking care of widows and orphans in the time of distress. They don't care about that. They don't rescue them. Okay, so that, that explains to me why you guys do it in front of churches, which I appreciate knowing. What about high schools? I mean, we have a pretty high Muslim community yeah. here. Like, trying to reach them through Christ, like, is not going to so be as effective when it comes to yeah. abortion. The reason we do school is because we got tired of standing out in front of abortion clinics and seeing teenage high school girls mm -hmm. coming in all the time. And already their parents, their pastors, their youth ministers have already, like, gave their blessing. God will forgive you. It's okay. You need your education, all right? Like, we know, because those are the answers we hear, all right? The, well, my pastor already said that he'll forgive this. Like, it's it's a, it's a not an unforgivable sin, you know? So, we go to the high school so they can actually see and, you know, get stuff like this and see that they have been lied to, that it's not a bad sin, that it is knitted together in the room, that it is, a, you know, a human. Like, everybody knows it's a human. You take a five, a four-year-old, and he'll say it's a baby. So, so that's why we go in high school. But you know, if someone's not a Christian, then we teach them about Christ, or why they have value, why it's important, you know? Right, and if they are a Christian, we say, don't be as evil and wicked as your parents, who've sat around and done nothing with 43 years of child sacrifice going on. Don't be like them. Stand up. Expose the evil. Right? Because the parents, we, we, we grew up in this. We're ex like to say nothing and do nothing is giving permission right and we need to stop that so look at the literature and see why we want to get rid of the pro-life movement yeah no i'm familiar with you guys i uh i'm familiar with you guys i just didn't know that you were coming to my son's school today yeah. so anyway all right hey Thanks well it's nice to meet you i'm todd i'm destiny nice matt to meet you. and did you know that did you hear of the bill hb 948 no is that the dismemberment one no. That's See, that's a pro-life pro bill. Okay. That's a wicked bill. No. This past uh, <laughs> February... Was abolish yes. all abortion? Mm -hmm. That one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw AJ's. And nobody supported it. I, I lean a little libertarian, and I believe in enforceable laws. And unfortunately, until we have changed the culture, again, I think the laws are pointless. Which is why I'm not necessarily very... You know, that goes with so then should we make all, rape legal then? Well, all they focus on is the laws. No, we have a culture that understands rape is wrong. Why? Because a woman has bodily autonomy and right over her being, which I get. We're the unborn Christian needs nation. that same the unborn needs that same And we have a humanity. culture we, we have a culture that understands murder is wrong too. Right. And, but we don't have a culture that understands that's a human being. That's the that's problem. That's what we've no, got to change. Not true. Every pastor in Texas, <laughs> you know, we got sixty seven probably sixty pastors. seventy okay, thousand pastors. You're still they talking all about do. a really small group. I think we got to think bigger than 000? the Republican Party or just Christians. It's got to be so much bigger. Do you than have that. the Republican platform? Uh, I'm not a Republican, so I mean, it's, I'm not a Republican either. I'm it's not a Republican be, either. But we don't we don't end abortion with one religious sect, with one political party. We end abortion through waking up a whole fucking culture that doesn't understand the human dignity of the unborn. And I don't know that this is doing it. I yes. Out of your uh, mouth, huh? Out of your heart, it says it comes the words out of your mouth. So. Oh, because I said the F word, that makes me not a Christian. No, I was just that's why I was asking. If you were a Christian. You know, yeah, I'm a shitty, I'm a shitty Christian. There you go. So, <laughs> well, you know, maybe just being obedient to the word of God and doing what it says and repenting where we don't, it changes everything because humility that's what God loves. Pride, He pushes away, the Bible says, He lifts up the humble, He actually like helps you. He like changes everything around you. That's why following Christ and doing what he says is way more important. That's why, like the Bible says, woe to you who make iniquitous decrees, bad laws. Woe to you who make evil laws. But woe to you that don't defend the innocent. 
you know what? I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your prayers. I don't want your festivals. I hate them. They're stenches to my nostril. Put them away. What I want is mercy and justice in the land. That's what God wants. I think what it comes down to is different strategies and what y'all find effective, I find not effective because I do, again, I have a 16 year old who it would be embarrassed to tell anyone that he's pro-life because of well, this type of thing. Well, we should pray about it because, you know, your I mean, method pro, is evil and wicked. They, and by the way, they assume you're the pro-life movement by being out here with the, well, we the signs with the fetuses. But, but we, the, we of the ones them. that actually stop and talk to you, most of the people go by. Are you doing focus groups afterwards where you go in and say, hey, how effective were we today? And at the end of the day, effectiveness needs to be the most important thing when it comes to ending abortion. It has to be effective. What's effective and what's not effective? Yeah. I just, street evangelism from the 80s is not effective in my opinion. These kids have seen it, Wait, they're from over, the 80s? it doesn't work. Mean from the they, 50s, they might the as well 40s, be Operation Rescue, like that's what they think. The, street evangelism from the 1800s? Or, <laughs> no. you know, I'm what? talking to Randall Terry, like yelling at well, Randall Terry's people a fool, as they in my pass. Opinion. Randall Terry's a fool in my <laughs> opinion. You know? guys totally are doing so a I'm really similar thing. No, so no, you not. are, you are. No, it's, did you find your Republican pamphlet? I'll read it. Do y'all have one online? No. No, it's, it's it's the platform of the Republican Party. Oh, yeah. They adopted I'm already not interested abolition. In that, so. Well, okay. it was there was like eight of us walked into the Republican convention and I literally called them to repent for regulating abortion. They said it was wicked and evil to regulate abortion. They need to abolish it, right? They need to make it illegal. That's what they should do. We didn't join them. We just called them to repent. The number one plank of the Republican Texas Party now is to abolish abortion and make it illegal. But the pro-lifers, these wicked and evil people, pro-lifers, actually opposed it and tabled it. They said, no, we don't want to put women in prison for having abortions, for killing their babies. We don't want to do that. We don't want to make it illegal, because if we make it illegal, there has to be a punishment. All right? So we don't want to do that. So they tabled it and buried it. All right? So Texas right to life, all these great pro-life. So you do want to put women in prison for having abortions? Definitely. You murder your baby, you should go to jail just like you murdered your one-year-old. So, and the father should go to jail? If he's part if of he's it, part if, of it he, yeah. if he didn't protest it, if he didn't say no, if he didn't call the authorities and say, hey, she's going to kill the baby, she should definitely go to jail. Look, don't be an ageist. A human is a human, all right? If it's a one-year-old, all right, let's be consistent. Let's be biblical. Read your Bible. Follow what the Bible says. If we just do what God says, boom, we're good, all right? We don't have liability, but if we ignore what the Bible says, we're liable. We're liable. Okay. No, I'm I'm 100% anti-abortion, but it probably has more to do with science than the Bible. But that's okay. I appreciate where you guys are coming from, and I get it. And I can tell. Uh, all right. I can tell based on your argument, based on man's learning. I I find it more compelling. I find the argument of science, the fact that more this compelling than God's word. Trillions of years to come together, and it's created this human being. Like that life is so sacred and precious to me Why do you that destroying it. Like, I can understand if you think science is more compelling than the Word of God. Do you not think God created science? Who created yeah. all this? Who created yeah. the atoms that made the child? Yeah. Like, no, but you guys think you have to tie this Bible verse. To me, the Bible actually has human fingerprints all over it. Science is just pure God. He created science. Like that, to me, is the purest form of of an argument for why this is wrong. So, all right, I gotta get to work. It was nice talking to you guys.